about, you know, what does it actually look like and feel like, uh, Andrew, to see one of these gifts come in? Um, you know, typically, and again, I was a pastor for three and a half decades, and, you know, for the longest time, it was kind of like pass the plate, and there's the, the income that you have for the month or for the year. So, Andrew, talk to us about, you know, what happens when when you have a, a, a significant gift uh, come in and, and the difference that that makes in your church, and you and David can kind of interact about, about that. Yeah, absolutely. So that I think the one that comes to mind the most is the gift that I referenced where I'm in the airport on December 24th, uh, taking a call with David because um, we had an individual's father who attends the church. I'm sorry, the, the son attends the church. The father does not attend the church. The son says, hey, my dad has a tax problem um, and he'd like to discuss it with you. Um, to which I'm like, I don't know how to solve the tax problem for this guy, but I know who to call. Um, so <laughs> I, I call David um, and he has, we have a conversation um, between the three of us about how we could facilitate this, this pretty complex gift of real estate uh, that he decide, decided to give to the church. Uh, there was a split interest involved in it. There, it was his um, sister-in-law was allowed to live on the property until she goes into a home. Um, but he wanted to donate its property worth $402,000. Um, so David, do you wanna to speak to that conversation that you had on Christmas Eve, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and this is uh, important to really understand because th this is, um, if you kind of do a case study on this gift alone, it's really interesting because it's like, the, this guy and Andrew, we can we giggled about this a little bit, but this guy has no charitable intent. And we asked him; he he really didn't care about the charity per se. He needed a tax deduction. He needed a write off, and so he was fine to give an asset um, by way of giving a life estate um, to his um, his deceased brother's wife. So um, so so she was living in the house. She's in her mid eighties. So actuarially, she doesn't have a lot of years left. And so we had to kind of like rush to get a, a you know, a title report, uh, open escrow, uh, draft the legal constructs around that gift, get uh, attorney on both sides of the, for the church as well as for the donor to review the agreements uh, and then get everything recorded uh, prior to, you know, December 31. And so it was one of those things that we had to get an appraisal on for valuation purpose, for deductions, a lot of, lot of boxes to check. And so, you know, when I got the call, I was, um, and I love these types of calls. I don't necessarily love them on December 24th, but I love these types of calls. Because <laughs> I just know what kind of an impact that can have. That's a major plan gift. And, and absent the planning, there would be no tax deduction for that guy. And when he passes, um, that he would just have a low cost basis asset that he needs to figure out with the estate. And so the, in this particular case, it's a win-win. He had no economic interest that he could take um, ongoing from that because of the life estate. And so it was just a, a, a great win-win-win for the donor, for the person living in the house and for the church who gets really an unencumbered, beautiful piece of real estate and within probably two, three years, that person's vacating it for assisted living. Um, and, and, and we have clear title to a property that we can, in essence, dispose of and add 400 plus thousand dollars to um, the church's balance sheet uh, for future ministry needs. 